There is another fish in Lake Victoria called Omena. This sardine is caught at night using nets and lights. In the morning, the omena is sold directly to women on the beach. The sardine is rich in protein and represents 30 to 35 percent of the total catch of fish in the lake. Women dry the omena in the sun on the beach. Gradually, the commercial value of this fish has increased. As a result, the sardine is exported to East African factories producing fish meal. By 2000, only one third of the sardine was used for human consumption. Most of the fish meal is being used for feeding animals, particularly chicken in the broiler industry. A major source of valuable animal proteins has therefore become unavailable to poor people. I have uh, about 2,000 bags of omena. Previously, the fish meal was being imported, but around 87, there was a, a drastic change. Kenyans started trying to use the omena. Despite of its high quality, uh, a, a source of protein, the price element proved to be very, very good compared to imported fish meal, which was used previously. Omena is actually an excellent food, being a source of protein for both human beings and, an, uh, and animals. Two spoons of this will meet the larger requirements, daily requirements of your iron needs, zinc needs, calcium needs, not to mention protein and fat. I think uh, the situation before us is rather tricky and we are finding uh, the industry emerging stronger than the needs of the local community, the nutrition needs of the local community. And obviously, since the small fish is finding its way into the factory from which it finds its way to the poultry farms, the argument or the, the contention here that we must address is whether we will feed the chicken first and the human beings later, or it's the child before the chicken. This is really the point that all the sectors that are involved in this field, both the health and the fisheries and the agriculture, must sit back and address. For most people, the consumption of fish is considerably reduced. Despite the fact that the total amount of fish caught is five times higher than it was 25 years ago, many people in the Lake Victoria region eat less fish. An increasing number of children suffer from diseases caused by a lack of animal protein that they could have obtained from the fish exported or the fish being turned into fish meal. Research conducted along the Kenyan shores of Lake Victoria in the 1990s showed that about half the children suffered from hunger and malnourishment and did not follow a normal pattern of physical growth. As many as 50% of the children had diseases related to lack of iron and vitamins. The Catholic hospital in Homer Bay receives many children suffering from malnutrition. Many parents hesitate to visit the dispensaries as they lack money. Aid organizations and international development banks seem to be poorly informed and have little interest in food security issues and the nutritional status of the people living around the lake. They do not seem to be aware of the negative consequences the export of fish and the production of fish meal for animal food have for the poor local population. Now, UNICEF is trying to compensate for this damage by importing vitamin and iron tablets which are distributed in the clinics around the shoreline. It is really unfair, very unfair, because these are the people who are supposed to benefit from this fish that is near them. And because it is really the only source of protein that they have in the area. But now, if they go there to at least get for the children or for themselves, it is so expensive for them that they cannot make it. So it is really unfair for them. This factory, which we can see behind here, 
it earns about 20 to 30 million dollars per year in foreign exchange. Very little of that money is being reinvested in this area. And if you look around, you know, you see no evidence of progress here. People are just as poor as they were 20 years ago here. Eric Jansen is a social anthropologist who has followed the development of the Lake Victoria fisheries since 1970. He has for several years lived with the fishermen and their families in fishing communities in Kenya and Uganda. In the 1990s, he returned to Lake Victoria and studied and wrote research reports on how the conditions of the people in the fishing communities had changed after Lake Victoria was integrated into the global economy. Uh, I think these factories have contributed to unemployment. This factory behind us here employs something like 200 people. If that factory had not been here and the fish had been processed locally, you would have something like 5,000 extra workplaces in this area alone. The 35 fish export companies export fish for many hundred million US dollars every year. A large proportion of the profit from this export remains abroad and very little money is being reinvested in the local communities around the lake. The current utilization of the fish resources of the lake is not sustainable. Many of the factories have a short-term perspective on their investment. They would like to regain their investment as quickly as possible and then make a quick profit. Many fisheries biologists have warned against the ongoing unregulated management of Lake Victoria as it might lead to a drastic decline in the amount of fish caught within a short period. The groups that have benefited from the export fisheries are mainly the owners of the factories and a small African elite. The losers are millions of poor people in East Africa. The fish export companies will, however, move on as soon as the lake becomes unprofitable. In fact, many factory owners have already left for fear that the lake could soon become empty. Fish export factories have already been established in other lakes of East Africa and on the Indian Ocean coast of East Africa. Many fear that the local people around these lakes and the coastal communities could suffer in the same way as the people living around Lake Victoria. Thank you.